Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my two dahlia plants here and also my giant calla lily down here. So in the previous update I've had these plants separate. Basically I had my two giant plants on the right here um, in a separate video and then I had the normal dahlia on another video. So I'm going to combine the two dahlias now uh, from now on just to make it a bit more simple. And this one down here, I might the, the calla lily, I might start including that in my banana videos just because they're kind of more related than, than these plants. Now basically in the last video, um, the, the, the dahlia on the left here, which is just kind of like a normal dahlia, it grows about three or four foot in height. That one was um, just starting to grow, I'd cut it back because it was too leggy, I put it under grow lamps, I put in a short uh, time lapse as well, and I'll put that in later on as well so you can see that again. And then uh, it's grown quite nicely since then, you can see it's starting to get a bit leggy now because it's away from the grow lamps, but it's quite bright here in the conservatory and it's doing really nice at the moment. And then the other plants, we have the tree dahlia here, which has put on some truly amazing growth. You can see how tall it's already grown. And uh, we also have the calla lily down here. So I'll start with the calla lily. So this plant in the last video was really quite small. It was pretty much just a tiny little shoot coming up, which was this little leaf down here. But as you can see, it's grown quite a lot already. So it's been uh, probably about a month or so, and it's already put on a huge amount of growth. Every leaf so far has been getting larger, and it's getting some of the nice white markings that this variety has. Now, this variety, as I said previously, can grow to about two meters in height. I'm trying to get it up to a decent size because it was a very small plant when I bought it. I wanted it to be a decent size by the time I put it in the garden so I can get a good, a good amount of impact from it and possibly even flowers this summer if I'm lucky. So I've been keeping this quite wet. It does feel quite wrong with how much I've been watering it. Normally with plants you don't want to keep them soggy all the time and with watering this, keeping it soggy, it feels like I'm going to give it root rot. But this is actually a semi-aquatic plant. It grows naturally in South Africa along riverbanks where the roots are constantly wet. So. We can actually grow this in a pond slightly submerged with just water covering the base of it. So that's why what I've been doing, I've been giving it similar conditions, just keeping the soil constantly wet. I've never let water sit in the saucer, I'm still a bit nervous, um, especially as when you have an aquatic plant, if it was in a large pond, the water would be well oxygenated. But if the compost is just completely soggy, it can sometimes not be as well oxygenated and even though it's less water it can actually suffer more from rot so I've not been keeping it as a true aquatic because I can't keep the water oxygenated but I've been keeping it damp at all times and uh, never letting it dry out and it seems to be absolutely loving that you can see it's got these lovely dark leaves and the little white flecks appearing which will have the, uh, the appearance on all the mature leaves now the mature leaves will look a bit different to this these are more the juvenile leaves but you can see it's starting to transition into its more mature form so this kind of rounded shape is, the, is kind of the immature stage. What it should have is big pointy leaves with big lobes at the top like this. It's going to get more extreme. This is going to get longer, more pointy at the end. And then this section at the top is going to have a, a bigger cut out the middle there. So that will continue. These leaves will get much larger. Leaves should grow up to about a meter and a half in height, so about five foot. And the, um, the leaves themselves can be almost a meter long or three foot long. So that will be quite exciting to see. It's growing well. I'll probably repot this um, probably in another month's time as it's starting to get quite large. But I'm really happy with how the growth has been on this. And as this is a plant that likes quite cool conditions for growth, it should continue to grow quite well throughout the summer in my, my cooler climate. So my biggest surprise has been this tree dahlia here. The growth has been absolutely phenomenal and you can really tell it's a different species to your normal dahlias. There's quite a lot of differences uh, compared with the normal dahlia. One of the first things I noticed the old stem, which has started to dry up, is a little bit woodier than the normal dahlia. That would make sense because it's tree dahlia, it needs to grow up to three, five, sometimes apparently 10 meters in height. And the normal dahlia, although it gets slightly woody, it just wouldn't have the strength to do that. So this has a slightly woodier stem. Also what's interesting to see is uh, the leaves are a lot thinner, so the leaves are actually quite thin whereas a normal dahlia they're, they're, they're a little bit thicker and they feel a bit more succulent, a bit more tropical type. Um, so my feeling is this might actually do quite well in cooler temperatures. I know they're supposed to be growing uh, in a similar part of the world but there's a lot of variation um, where they grow. They grow in Mexico and a little bit further south in Central America but they grow in mountains so they, they can just be a few miles away from each other but the altitude difference can give them a quite a different uh, climate zone. These, this should survive in my winters if I keep it well mulched. The top half will certainly die off, but it's the roots that will survive. And it'll be interesting to see. I will try and mulch it and hopefully keep it over winter, and it should hopefully survive in my climate. The leaves, though, they definitely seem much more like the leaves I see in my, my own native environment. So they're quite thin, they're slightly hairy as well. 
A lot of plants in my area have these kind of thin leaves, uh, which is much more in keeping with a temperate plant. So I think this will do quite well in my climate, even though I won't get flowers. It needs a very long growing season to come into flower. I think it will grow quite well. And the thing that's really surprised me most about this is the height. You can see how ready, already how much it's grown. And this was a long way behind this daily on the left, but it's already overtaken it. Now the growth has slowed down. I would say the growth from this was as rapid as something like Japanese knotweed or some of those really vigorous uh, herbaceous plants that grow up to two or three meters in height and they put on really fast growth at the beginning of the year. This thing shot up to about a foot and a half in height within just a week or two. I was really quite surprised at how fast it grew. It has slowed down now. I think what it is, is it's got a big tuber in there, got a lot of stored energy. What it does is it grows rapidly until it uses up all that energy from the tuber. Then it slows down and grows at a more sensible kind of normal rate. So I reckon it's used up all its energy from its tuber now. So the growth has slowed definitely, but it's still going to grow at a decent pace. And I should still expect this to grow to two meters at least in this season. It's already grown almost a meter in height and it's only, um, it's only been going for about, uh, probably only about a month or so. So I'll put in a time lapse now and I'll show you how uh, fast how fast the growth is. The time lapse, I'll show you both actually. So the time lapse for the, the daily on the left here, that was about two weeks or three weeks of worth of growth. And the, the, the time lapse I'll show you for this tree dahlia was literally only three days and it grew more in three days than this one did in three weeks. So I'll just show you a clip of those two now. So as you can see, that rope is truly very rapid. That was when this was about a foot high up to two foot high. And when it got to about two foot, it started to slow down as it just went into a kind of a normal growth phase instead of its, its rapid growth phase. So it'll be interesting to see how this does. This, these stems were actually very soft and very flexible. And they were, they were feeling quite weak, but now they're starting to strengthen up. They're starting to lignify, they're starting to get woody, which is what this plant needs to do to survive the outdoor environment. I was quite surprised at how fast it grew and how leggy it became. Also how wide the, the nodes are in between the, the uh, leaves there. You can see there's quite wide nodes. I had this under high intensity grow lamps which normally keeps any kind of plant short and stubby. Doesn't let it grow leggy. But even under high intensity grow lamps with quite cold temperatures this still grow really, grew really fast and really leggy. So this was actually growing quite fast even in the conservatory. And the temperatures, temperatures were only 10 degrees at night around about 16 degrees during the day. So I was really happy to see this can grow well in cold temperatures. I was a bit concerned because I know with normal dahlias in here in Scotland, unless it's above about 18, 20 degrees Celsius, they really do grow slowly. And that's an issue here because our average highest temperature in summer is around 18 degrees most days. So we don't get very high temperatures and dahlias normally grow slow. But with this tree dahlia here growing so quickly, even at such low temperatures, it's a really good sign. I think I'm gonna get good growth from it this year. So I've been trying to stop this from growing too tall and too leggy because when I put it outside there's going to be a risk of wind. I will probably stake it with some bamboo canes just to make sure it doesn't get too badly damaged by the wind. But I want to try and get it as, as dirty as, as I can. So I've actually had this under a fan for the last week or so. Uh, constantly blowing air on it so it's moving around. That will get it more used to the wind and also strengthen its stem up. And then what I do every day is I give it a wiggle and I'll see what I mean. I basically do that every day. What it does is it damages the stems, very, very small amount at the cellular level. That doesn't kill any of the cells in the stems, but it, it releases stress hormones. Those stress hormones then cause the stem to, to lignify, become woodier, and also to thicken as well. It's a natural process that happens outside in plants when it's windy. They basically get slight stress on the stems, and that will just cause them to grow slightly thicker and slightly shorter and resist against the wind. So I've been doing that uh, every single day, probably about two or three times a day. And that does seem to be helping because I can feel that the stems are definitely getting woodier. So I'll continue to do that. That'll just make sure it's acclimatized for when it does go outside. I'll also have to be careful bringing it outside, make sure I wait until the, the frost risk is gone. It's still gonna be at least another two months until there's, a, there's no risk of frost. So I'll have to see how big this gets. If this grows too tall and it looks like it's gonna hit the roof in my conservatory, 
what I'm going to do is cut the top off. That's to slow down the plant slightly and give it a branched appearance. I don't actually want these to be branched because I want these to grow really tall. I want them to get really large. I don't want them to look like a shrub because there's lots of shrubs around the UK that look similar to this. Especially Sambucus or otherwise known as Elder. Elder has very similar leaves to this. I don't want it to just look like an elder plant with lots of bushy growth. I want this to grow really tall with giant leaves. So I'm not going to um, cut it unless I have to. And I was tempted to just leave the one shoot, but I decided to let the two shoots grow, just as in insurance policy in case one snaps. But in the future, I'll, I'll, I'll have to decide. I might just let one grow at a time, because I want it quite narrow and tall. I'm going to have a lot of banana trees in the same bed as this, and I don't want it to be taking up too much space. I don't mind the vertical space, but I don't want to take up too much width, otherwise it'll be shading out and out-competing some of the banana trees. So that's probably about it for this video. As I say, the tree dahlia has really surprised me with its growth amazingly rapid. I'm, I'm really hopeful for this. I think it might actually do quite well in my climate because I wasn't expecting it to grow so well in such cool temperatures. And uh, the other dahlia is actually getting quite big already. I might have actually taken that into growth a little bit too early. I probably should have waited maybe another month until taking it into growth but it was already starting to grow in the conservatory so I just decided to, to give it some grow lamps and I haven't given it any high temperatures, but it's just started to grow anyway, uh, but a much slower rate. And the 18 degrees Celsius we've had during the day has been enough for this to grow. Now, the last week we did have some sunshine. It did get the 25 in this conservatory. I think that's why this suddenly had a bit of a growth spurt, because just a couple of weeks ago this was a lot shorter. In the last week it's really started to shoot up. But this will never get as big as this one on the right. This will grow about a metre at max, or three foot max, uh, for the summer, and then start flowering. But the size it is now, I think I might be able to get it to flower late May, early June, just as I plant it out. So hopefully I'll get a whole summer of flowering out of this. When it comes to the giant calla lily down here, it's been in the grow box. Um, cool temperature grow box, I've got two. One's at high temperatures, one's at cool temperatures. And uh, it hasn't had very high light levels either. I'll probably take it out of there soon as it gets too big and take it into the conservatory and just have it give it slightly higher light levels and also higher daytime temperatures so it can grow a little bit faster. But I do have to be careful with this. Where this comes from in the wild, when it comes to summer and it gets very hot and dry, it naturally goes dormant. So I don't want temperatures over 30 degrees. That could cause dormancy and actually slow down its growth. So I need to be careful with that one. And that one, I'll probably start doing updates either on its own or with the bananas, maybe some of the canna lilies, just to kind of tie in with those better. So that's all for this update and I'll see you guys in probably a month or two's time and we'll see how much these plants have grown then.